Well, good morning. I like to read a psalm and found in open your Bibles to Psalms 91. Psalms 91. And uh, I'm going to read the first, I'm going to read the first uh, six verses. And uh, in my Bible, this is entitled, Safely Abiding in the Presence of God. <coughs> Verse 1, he who dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. You shall not be afraid of terror by night nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lay waste at noonday. Lord, again, thank you uh, for this opportunity to share from your word this psalm. It tells us so much that you are our God, our Lord, our Savior, and under your wings you will protect us as we beseech you, Lord, now today uh, to uh, lead and guide our services and of what we say and do today is to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. So the key verse I'm going to look at here today is under your, his wings, under his wings, you and I shall take refuge. And that is a very comforting thing to me in the day and age that we live in. And um, I just want to reflect a little bit about what's happened in the last week or so. And the pastor did already talk about his first signage. But the point was that my wife and I had traveled several times in the countryside and I want to reflect this thought. I've seen signs, you know, the presidential signs. I, we were starting to count, and I would count Trump signs, and I would count Hillary signs, or Clinton signs. And I'd come up with a synopsis that every one Clinton sign Maybe I seen, I Trump signs. That's not just in one neighborhood. That's not one outlaying area. We had went to our camp lot. So I thought to myself, Lord, should I take refuge in that in message that maybe the out, these people are really going to vote for, for our, this president, that we don't think he's too a nice guy when you think about what he's said and, and what he's done. But so I was hesitant to believe that is even going to happen. So I worked the polling booth Tuesday, very calm and genuous people come and vote it and lots of people did and I did stay up to watch for the final count what's going to happen here and by three o'clock Hillary is announcing her admi admiration for our president new president Trump he she she immediately admitted the defeat yet the polls had her up 10 percent 8 percent in some places and I'm thinking to myself we, as a community, should take refuge in that. That maybe God is not dead. You ever heard that song? I mean, that's a movie, you ever watched this? God is not dead. Maybe God is really alive, and that we can embrace that thought, that there's people out there, maybe they don't go to church, I don't know, but out there in our state, it's all red, except some of the metropolis areas are blue. But not only our states, but Pennsylvania, Michigan, traditional, and Wisconsin, people finally decided that they had apparently enough of what was going on. Now, can we take refuge in it? Yes, we can. 
as a church. Our pastor actually spoke the last couple of weeks publicly about this. And um, so he said we're allowed to say things like that from the pulpit. So here I am I'm saying something about it. That we need to take refuge. That we need to continue to, to push. Push back, they call it. We're pushing back. Our, our school systems, you know, Kim's a school teacher. She'll tell you how, oh, she doesn't even want to go to school to teach her kids because of the pushback that she gets from the public, from the administrators. It's tough. It's been tough. I'm hoping that this time and period of our country, we can turn back some of the things that have been turning away from God. And I'm thinking about President Eisenhower. What did he do? Notably, anyone can tell me this? I think it's the, the president. That our coinage, coinage that had what on it? And God we trust. Who did that? What president did that? that was Who? That was so, good, thank you. I just want to confirm that because I thought maybe I was wrong. But 1952, whenever he did that, our president just saw fit to put that on our coinage. <clears throat> and they have tried to take it off of our coinage they being the Congress and whatever. So we fight against the enemy, which if you look under all these verses, it doesn't just need first, but just, just take a thought there. And if we have a little handle, we have a grip, we're not sinking just yet, we're holding on, okay? Hold on and let's push forward, as the pastor just admonished us, we need to pray. So first of all, we, every Wednesday we meet for prayer meeting. I'm going to ask, tell you, it's pretty scant, to people who come out for prayer meeting. I'm not saying that you're not praying at home, okay? But I'm saying that if we can gather together as a group, we can pray and become, maybe got more dynamics will take place. But this prayer prompter's on the desk out there, so pick one up today, take it home. There's many requests on there, but it includes that, again, the thought of the day here is prophecy is, is like a lamp shining in the dark. So it's, it's a thought that I'm encouraging to, to take this prayer prompter and, and go with that. Secondly, the other thing in this morning I, in the paper I seen that was very heartwarming in a lot of ways is Gibson's restaurant in Oberlin. Who has it? Who took the paper this morning? Front page. Front page. They, they had people coming from 50 miles away to shop in their store to patronize them because they stood for what is right. And yet the students, of course, were very abrasive about that and so forth. The thing is, there are people out there willing to show their colors. And if we're willing, as Christians, to show our colors, I'm encouraging you to do that. We need to go out those doors. That's our, we have, we don't even have to go to Mexico or Canada or, we don't even have to go very far, but to Lyria or LaGrange or what, we have our field right here. It's right here. There's many people who need the Lord in our own community. And I just pray the Lord will encourage me to also to speak out more. It's not easy for an illiterate person like me to do that. Now you high floating people can know the English language like I don't know it very well. Pastor, I embarrass him many times. He says that. You know, it just happens. I am, what I'm saying today is from my heart that I want to serve the Lord with gladness. I want to serve him at Bethel Baptist Church. I want to see Bethel Baptist Church grow. Amen. And we need to reach out to others to have that happen. I think it's a chance for us to have a boost here even at Bethel Baptist Church. Okay? That's all. And um, I'll close with prayer. Lord, thank you again for this opportunity to share these words. And I just pray, Lord, that you take us as your vehicle, as and let us go forth and share the gospel as you direct us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.